Hello, we thank you so much for your interest in following us on Soma Bible Channel. We do appreciate your likes and comments. If this is the first time to watch us, do not forget to subscribe in order to get notified when a new video is released. The topic of this week, Deuteronomy and the later writings of the Bible. The Lord loved your ancestors very much. He loved them so much that He chose you, their descendants, to be His people. He chose you instead of any other nation, and you are still His chosen people today. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 15. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for giving us the opportunity to study this lesson. Open our hearts to receive and to better understand it. Please help us to put it into practice. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear listeners, all through the Old Testament, many writers talk about how God made the earth. These writers use the same words Moses wrote in Genesis 1. Just look at what Jeremiah says, I looked at the earth. It was empty, there was nothing on it. I looked at the sky, and its light was gone. Many Old Testament writers often talk about God and His agreement. So, we should not be surprised that they include parts of Deuteronomy in their own writings. The book of Deuteronomy is all about the special agreement. This week, we will see how other Bible writers use quotes from Deuteronomy. Which parts of Deuteronomy did these writers use? How important are their ideas for us today? Let us see the book of the law. Josiah became king of Judah when he was eight years old. He was king for 31 years, from 640 before Christ to 609 before Christ. When Josiah was king for 18 years, something big happened. This happening changed the history of Israel for a long time. Bible experts believe that the book of the law in 2 Kings chapter 22 verse 8 is Deuteronomy. The book was lost for many years. Then it was found when Josiah was king. Josiah heard the warnings from the book of the law for the first time. His heart was deeply touched. Josiah understood the law in a new way. He saw that God gave Israel a choice between two ways, life or death and blessings or curses. Josiah saw that God wanted to save his people fully, just as he saved them from Egypt. God promised to bless his people in the land of promise. He promised to make them the most powerful people on earth. King Josiah tried very hard to please the Lord after that. Josiah promised to follow the Lord and to obey his commands, the laws and his rules. He promised to do this with all his heart and soul. He improved life in his land in many ways. He got rid of those who got messages from people who had died. He got rid of people who talked to the spirits of people who had died. He got rid of the statues of family gods and the statues of other gods. He got rid of everything else the Lord hates that was in Judah and Jerusalem. He did it to carry out what the Lord acquired. Josiah made many big changes. These changes show us just how far the people turned from God in their hearts. Deuteronomy shows us that the law and the agreement are important to the friendship Israel had with God. The law and the agreement also were an important part of the plan God had for his chosen people. In Nehemiah 9, we really see the idea about God from Deuteronomy. Nehemiah writes, You are God. Lord, only you are God. You made the sky and the highest heavens and everything in them. You made the earth and everything on it. You made the seas and everything in them. You give life to everything. All the heavenly angels bow down and worship you. What about Jeremiah and Micah and Deuteronomy? As we already have seen, the book of Deuteronomy was lost for a very long time until Josiah was king. During the time of Josiah, Jeremiah started his work for God. So, we can see that the book of Deuteronomy is very important to Jeremiah and his writings. Again and again in Deuteronomy, Moses tells the people that their success in Canaan is possible only if they obey. If the people disobey, then God will remove them from the land he gave them. Look at the warning in Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 4 to 5. These verses show us that obedience is very important. Yes, God chose Israel. Yes, the temple of God was in their land. But if the people failed to obey God, then these two blessings will not save them. In Micah chapter 6 verse 1 to 8, God is upset with his people. The people broke his agreement. So, the Lord takes his people to court. Micah explains that the Lord has a complaint against his people. The word complaint in the Hebrew language shows a legal disagreement. This information tells us the Lord brings a legal charge against his people. This idea shows us that the agreement is really a contract about the law. We should not be surprised by this idea at all. The law was very important to the agreement God made with his people. Micah borrows language straight from Deuteronomy. He said this, Oh man, he has told you that is good. What does the Lord ask of you but to do what is fair and to love kindness, and to walk without pride with your God? 
Micah wants the Israelites to be fair and to show people mercy. What about the prophet Daniel? One of the most famous prayers in the Old Testament is Daniel 9. Daniel learns from the book of Jeremiah that the time for Israel to go home will happen soon. So, Daniel starts to pray for God to keep this promise to his people. With tears, Daniel confesses his sins and the sins of Israel. Daniel understands that Israel caused their own suffering. God was fair and right in his actions when he allowed the Babylonians to take Israel out of the promised land. The prayer of Daniel shows us exactly what God in Deuteronomy warned his people about if they broke his agreement. Twice, Daniel talks about the law of Moses in Daniel chapter 9 verse 11 to 13. For sure, this law includes Deuteronomy. As Deuteronomy tells us, the people will be made prisoners for disobeying the law Moses gave them from God. Then they will be carried away from the promised land. Everything happens just as Moses warned them in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 28 that we quote, The Lord became furiously angry, and in his great anger he uprooted them from their land and threw them into a foreign land, and they're there today. Daniel never asks the question, why, why is all this awful stuff happening to Israel? Daniel knows exactly why. He read the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy helps Daniel and his people understand why the evil and suffering happened to them. Their experience is not bad luck. They lost their homes and land because they disobeyed God. At the same time, the prayer of Daniel shows us hope. God had not forgotten his people. He promised to bring them home again soon. Dear listeners, big changes started to happen. During this time, King Josiah worked hard to destroy all the statues of false gods in the land. Josiah removed the worship of these false gods and their religions from the land, too. This job was almost too much for any human to do. The people had bowed down to the statues of wood and stone for so long. But Josiah did not give up. He worked hard to remove every last bit of false worship from the land and to make it clean. This kind of action is what our Lord need us to do in our hearts, in our families, in our churches, and in our society. God helps us. This is the end of the lesson. Please remember to share this wonderful message to your friends and relatives. God bless you.